This is the tornado right here. I'm gonna step up. Oh, there it is. Tornado coming towards Decatur. This storm is a life-threatening situation. You need to be in your safe place right now. This is the most electrified storm I've ever seen in my life. Look at how strong those inflow winds are. We've got significant damage to Decatur. Is anybody out here? Significant damage to Decatur right now. Oh, there oh goes Transformers. God. It's in town. Dad. It's in town. Rogers, be in your safe place now. Let's go to that. We go to that normalized rotations act. I think we've got a tornado that's touching down in Rogers, right in the heart in the city of Rogers. There is a giant rain wrapped wedge tornado going through Bentonville and Rogers right now. Not the way you want to have to deal with your Memorial Day weekend, that's for sure. Now that we have daylight, you can see a lot more of the trees down, a lot of power lines down. Uh, some of these images we're seeing as the sun comes up is just tragic, really. Buildings, homes, and businesses that have been in this community for years, decades even, destroyed. On the early morning of May 26, 2024, a deadly tornadic supercell tore through parts of northeast Oklahoma and northwest Arkansas, producing a dozen tornadoes, destroying homes, leveling businesses, and uprooting tens of thousands of trees. Now, one of the wedge tornadoes became the widest tornado ever in Arkansas's history. Many families saw their lives change in the blink of an eye as entire communities were left with scars that will be felt for years to come. Now, your weather authority team was watching the severe weather potential closely leading up to that fateful weekend. And once it was becoming apparent that trouble was brewing for our area, we quickly jumped into action. We knew our neighbors were in harm's way. We tracked these storms and we witnessed the immense damage that these tornadoes left behind. Join us as we recap this historic storm, tell the stories of heartbreak and resilience, and how you can help tornado victims as we take you through one supercell to remember. Hi everyone, Chief Meteorologist Dan Scoff alongside meteorologist Zach Gilday in the weather lab. A very serious situation happening in Oklahoma. Claremore took a direct hit from a violent tornado. Uh, potentially violent tornado. A lot to talk about here. There's one cell that's going to be an issue. It's a terrible situation. Look at the shear tracks too. You're going to see this storm rotating as it ripped right through Claremore. Look at how fast it developed too as it went through limestone. Josh, we're seeing the lightning flashes. They're tremendous. Uh, show me, uh, tell me what you're seeing here with the storm. Yeah, right now, Dan, we're located in uh, Leech, Oklahoma which is in far western Delaware County, right on the, the far fringes of our weather coverage area right now. And I'm gonna tell you, man, I've been chasing for about uh, five, six years now, and this is the most electrified storm I've ever seen in my life. Now this is outside of our weather coverage area, but the reason we launched this stream is take a look at where this cell is. We look at this from the radar in Tulsa, uh, just to the east of Tulsa, Inola, and now you're getting to see where this supercell may be tracking, which is right towards Benton County. So new circulation starting to ramp up. We're probably gonna have a tornado warning here pretty soon for Delaware County. And once that Delaware County tornado warning happens, we're gonna be on the air. We're gonna be covering that on television and we're gonna stay on this storm until it moves out of the entire area. We're going to get you through it. Make sure you tell your friends and family that might be sound asleep. It's going to get a little bit hairy here very shortly. And these storms are ramping up fast. So this is a significant storm. One supercell, that's all it takes. And it's gonna be a problem. Hi everyone, Chief Meteorologist Dan Scoff, Meteorologist Zach Gilday. You've been watching these storms in Oklahoma all day. Now we got a tornado warning that is in Delaware County. We've been on our live stream. This storm has a history of not only producing tornadoes, but tornadoes with significant damage. 
And again, right now it's just south of Tag Flats. So I cannot stress it enough. Tag Flats, you need to be in your safe place. Bull Hollow is, is heading right towards you. And, and then beyond that, Cloud Creek, we got a major road right there. We've got Power Flats, Dan. All right, let's We've bring them up. Flashes. Bring them up. I see, I saw Power Flats just, just a few moments ago. Up to my northeast, I'm getting into better position right now. Let's type that so, up on uh, NWS think, chat so they can confirm this yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. You're saying Power Flashes by Bull Hollow? Yep. Yep, Power Flashes by Bull Hollow. There it is right there. There's the circulation ramped up dramatically. He's looking straight north. Yep. All right, tornado on the ground. We're reporting it. Tornado on the ground. Here, Bull Hollow. Tornado on the ground. I see power flashes. Okay. Just saw a couple power flashes. Yeah. We got a tornado on the ground right now, Dan. It's crossing Highway 59, so that's where those power lines would be. And uh, yeah, wow. Look at the RFD cut, too. You can see that rear flank downdraft cut. Yeah, go ahead and type that in. I want to bring up, if we can, weather two and uh just want to let you know we got james hilger don't really have a fee but just wanted to give people an idea that uh james hilger is located near kansas you can see he's on 412 uh, as he's making its way eastward to stay ahead of the storm yeah, i'm gonna bring up mega doppler with uh two different screens on at the same time so we got james hilger and we got our decatur weather bug network camera along with the radar information. And you can see along with some of our other spotters. So there you're seeing uh, Joshua Myers uh, located on the screen. There's Frankie Shepard too. We've got another uh, storm spotter that's located on the storm as uh, they're tracking it. Storm Springs, Dan, and I'm telling you, I'm looking off to my north right now and I'm seeing this, this uh, there's a lot of lightning that's going on and I see a very uh, significant lowering. I can't tell if the tornado's on the ground where I am right now. But I know that area of rotation that's there, that's just off to the east of Colker now, is very significant. So I think a tornado might be imminent right now. Look at that hook. Oh, we're going to have a tornado. It's imminent, folks. That's not good. This is bad news, Zach. This is a circulation that's really ramping up and ramping up dramatically as it makes its way into the Benton County lines. So there's the rotation. This is a, you know, this is a tornado, Zach. It's, it's imminent. It's absolutely eminent. There's the newest rotation signature. Look at how this is all starting to ramp up. So this storm is in the process of cycling. We're about to see some power flashes on our weather bug network camera. Let's do a new track on this. Oh, wow. That is a strong circulation. Folks, please take this storm seriously. I got a fresh track on that storm again. This is strengthening, definitely. This is a tornado warning if you're in that red polygon. You need to be in your safe place right now. This storm has, has had a history of producing significant damage in that red cone. That is the track of this storm. Oh, oh my goodness, Zach. That rotation tightened up even more now. It looks like it's on the ground now. I think we've got debris, Zach. Oh, it, yep. yep. Confirmed, folks. Confirmed. This is a tornado on the ground. On the ground, just west of Decatur. Take it seriously. We know this. This is a, 90, a 95, 99% confidence that we've got a tornado just west of Decatur. And you can see it right there. That is a big debris signature just west of Ionia, heading towards the Decatur area. So I, again, if you live in these areas, this, this storm is a life-threatening situation. You need to be in your safe place right now. And we can see that white area, that is where the debris is. So again, Ionia, the Decatur area, cannot stress it enough. We, we've seen it on the camera, it's been, it's been confirmed. So again, this is a life-threatening situation. We're in Benton County, the storm is heading towards the Decatur area. And when we see the whites in, in that um, algorithm, that means that the tornado was on the ground. Got to update, Dan, the uh, radar estimated um, intensity is EF3. I'm traveling northbound along Highway 59. Well, well, I think I'm seeing them. I think I'm seeing them. I think I'm seeing power flashes. I just kind of saw them. Oh, yeah, power flash. You see that? Just confirmed, Dan, by the National Weather Service. Yep. We got a confirmed tornado. Considerable. <laughs> oh, wow. This is the tornado right here. I'm going to step up. Oh, there it is. Tornado coming towards Decatur. Take this seriously, folks. You're going to see lights starting to go out. That's the tornado. 
Josh, we have a confirmation. We have visual on it. Look at the flag almost going straight up. Big lightning flash right there. There it is. Tornado. It's on the ground. Please take this seriously, folks. This is a life threatening situation. This is very, very dangerous. That's a tornado. Lots of power flashes. We know it's high, it's hitting power poles. It's knocking them down. Look at horizontal rain curtains coming. Oh, look at look at how strong those inflow winds are. Hey, there's a tornado! Okay, tornado. There's power flashes. They're gone. There's a tornado! Don't go any further! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. That I hear you. That person that's just passed me, they don't know that there's a tornado. I see it! Yeah, I you see can it. see it. So there's two circulations. There might be multiple debris signatures, and the, and the camera just went out. Camera just went out. Yeah, so, all right. I can I can hear you. I can hear you. So Decatur uh, looks like it took a hit. You can see those inflow curtains that were happening. Uh, let's do another track. Uh, uh, so go ahead, Michael. What are you seeing, man? What are you seeing? Uh, Dan Scott. Yes. What are you seeing? I can really hear it. It is super loud. It is on the ground. It is on the ground. Okay, you can hear the roar. Uh, if you are in the path of this storm, take it seriously. Oh, there goes oh my Transformers. God. It's in town. Dad. It's in town. <gasps> it looked like there were two circulations on the ground at the same time. Um, and so, yeah, it looked like this might have been a satellite tornado that developed. Because if you go to the, yeah, right there. Look at that. Significant damage to the cater right now. Check that out right there. We've got, oh, we've yeah. got power lines down. We've got a train in the middle of the road. The chase is over. We're now doing search and rescue. Okay. All right. There's a house right next to the address you gave me. I have flashed my from the house. I believe we should have you. You guys okay? Uh, my sister, my brother-in-law, two little girls, and my who's, mom. Who's trapped? My mom. Gotcha. Okay. Can you show me where? Uh, okay, all right. Help. Let me see your arm. Okay, yep. All right, you're good. All right, sweetheart, come here. I'm going to pick you up, all right? Okay. It's okay. It's We're going to get you out of there, okay? Perfect. How do you feel about standing up? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm make sure nothing else falls on. Okay, grab right around me. Grab, grab, grab. It is 1.24 in the morning, and it's on a Sunday, and here we are at May 26th. So, yeah, I can see the damage. Now, how far south of Decatur are you, Josh? Uh, I'm about, uh, about two miles south of Decatur right now. Oh, wow. So that was that yeah. satellite tornado. No doubt about yeah. that. That wasn't even the major parent circulation. Yeah, this this was a this was a strong tornado, Dan. These trees are snapped. They're snapped. We've got twisted metal right in front of me. Power lines that are down everywhere. And we're in search and rescue mode now. Well, we got another circulation, folks. Centerton, you need to be taking your tornado precautions. It's on the eastern side of the warning. Let's get back to if we can here. New tornado warning. New tornado. And by the way, I could see the wall cloud spinning. 
on our Fulbright Junior High Weatherbug Network camera. Weather 2, yeah, there it is in the foreground. This is it right here. We're going to get the new information on that warning, but this is the literal lowering and the wall cloud, and it almost looks like maybe some power flashes off in the distance. Oh, Zach, another one imminent tornado yeah, warning. This storm is heading east. into highly populated area, too. Yeah. Folks, this is a serious deal. We have a storm that's produced a history of tornadoes, and not only tornadoes, but significant tornadoes. You saw the damage that Josh reported south of Decatur, probably some damage in Decatur. We know that. There's the circulation that's approaching the Centerton area. Take your tornado precautions if you live in Centerton. Uh, Michael, you're on speakerphone here. So tell me where you're at. It looks like a home that was damaged. Give us the location. I am west of Centerton a little bit, and the second story on this house is gone. That's in front of me right here. There are trees down everywhere on 102. Um, they are laying down just all over the road. It's a storm that's nonstop here through Benton County. New circulation is really starting to ramp up. This is our Fulbright Junior High Weatherboat Network camera. This could be imminent right here. Another tornado that's going to be touching down on the north side of Centerton. Take your tornado precautions immediately. So you can see that's moving northeast. So that's going to be crossing on the north side of Bentonville, very close to that Bella Vista interchange uh, where you've got Highway 71 and the new construction that's occurring. Uh, uh, this is this is not good. The Little Flock is going to be in your area around 2.02 a.m. Tux Chapel Methodist Church, 2.08. Pea Ridge area, 2.09 a.m. So again, we're in Benton County. This storm is about to pass the Interstate 49 corridor. And if you're in Bentonville, Little Flock, Pea Ridge, Avoca, Garfield, you need to be in your safe place right now. This is a life-threatening storm. Payton, you're very close to that circulation right now. What are you seeing right now? I know, I'm seeing horizontal rain currents off of the distance. I'm right at the exit 85 uh, ramp. Just at the top, seeing, uh, seeing a rotating wall cloud for sure. All right, you're seeing that. Oh, Roger this is, is not down, right? good. Hang on the line with me. Yeah, we will, we will. We're gonna hang on, because you, right. you're gonna have a great view of this circulation. All right, I see, it, see, it, see a funnel cloud. There's a clear slot developing and I'm in it. I'm seeing the horizontal rain curtains going through Bella Vista. So let's bring this up on Bella Vista uh, full here. Stand by. Oh my goodness. Look at this, Zach. Bring this up on Weather 3 quick. Look at these winds. And they are racing south. So that is the circulation. Peyton, are you still seeing that funnel? Yeah. Oh, whoa. Like it's right over this. Behind, maybe just the angle, but maybe just to the west, but uh, those winds really cranked up and the clear slot starting to develop. Look at that. So these winds are racing into the center of the circulation, which is a little south of Bella Vista. This is our Cooper Elementary Weatherbug Network camera. Winds are really cranking up. I'm gonna point south. Remember, this is exactly what we saw in Decatur before we started seeing power flashes and when the tornado touched down. So a tornado could be imminent again. Rogers area, Around 1:55 a.m. I got circulation right over me, right at exit 86. Okay, okay. that's meteorologist Peyton Langford right there, seeing circulation over exit 86. Um, St. Mary's Hospital area, 1:57 a.m. Okay. Hey, I, I just want to let you know we do we do have the mayor too online uh, with the uh, city of Decatur, but. Uh, at, at the moment, we're still going to cover this storm because it's moving through Rogers right now. But uh, let's just real quick get an update from um, Mayor Tharp. Uh, so Mayor Bob Tharp on the line, city of Decatur. You can confirm damage and also homes that are damaged. So just give us a quick update real quick. Yes, one of our city employees lives on the southwest corner of Decatur in the county. His home is badly damaged. His shop building is gone. He made it with his family to the basement and we appreciate everything you're doing on the coverage of this tornado in the decade. Well, thank That's you. That's all I know at this point.
All right, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Bella Vista, I'm, I'm seeing some really crazy, and, and you'll let camera and Decatur, we can see the power flashes, um, and that those cameras are just worth their weight in gold. So thank you for partnering with us to allow to put that up on City Hall. It's our pleasure, thank yeah. you. Okay, thank you. There is a giant rain wrap wedge tornado going through Bentonville and Rogers right now. Intense circulation. Look at this. We're going to go back to the reflectivity. There it is. Rogers, be in your safe place now. Let's go to that. We go to that normalized rotation, Zach. I think we've got a tornado that's touching down in Rogers, right in the heart in the city of Rogers. 1.50 in the morning here. Super serious scene. Down here, I-49. Uh, there's a lot of lightning that is similar with that of the train. A lot of explosions are lightning right now. to be downstairs in your safe place right now um, under something the duck acronym you need to take those precautions right now downstairs under something center of the building keep away from windows cannot stress that enough this is a life-threatening storm this storm has had a history of producing significant damage this is going through a highly populated area right now so this is a life-threatening situation you need to be in your safe place right now yeah this is um, no joke this is not the Fayetteville fizzle you know this is a storm that is ramped up that has continued its intensity and this is about as serious as a supercell gets. We got Peyton back. Peyton, what are you what are you seeing? Nothing good. Yeah, ben, Bill and Rogers have had been hit by a significant tornado. The time is currently 2 a.m. May 26, 2024. This is a tornado warning. It, it is actually clipping portions of Madison County too, far, far northern Madison County, um, the Clifty area. And there's nearly baseball size hail falling okay. over Beaver Lake right now. Beaver Lake is getting slammed with massive hail. Okay. I mean, look at this right here. We're talking 2.85 inches over the east side of Beaver Lake, Whitney Mountain Lodge, East to Rocky Branch, that is a tight circulation, and, and that is right on the border of the uh, Benton, Madison County, Carroll County area. It looks like still there's a tornado ongoing out towards War Eagle and possibly Eureka Springs. It's a completely wound up supercell right now. This is going to be a view of the of the storm because it's going to be moving over the Beaver Lake area. Remember, we were saying Beaver Lake, do not be boating tonight and don't stay on your boats overnight. This is a very serious storm that is about to have a circulation moving right over Beaver Lake, but it will be rain wrapped most likely. Look, you can't even see anything except just constant flashes of lightning, intense storm. But there is that circulation northeast of War Eagle and just to the southwest of that. That's where you got that strongest circulation. You just got a fresh scan right there. Okay. You want to check out the velocity? Yeah, let's look at the velocity image here. And uh, that is just a very tight couplet that's going to be moving very close. Let's zoom way in to let people know as it's about to cross, it looks like um, uh, Highway 23 as it gets close to the, the Eureka Springs area. That circulation went right over War Eagle. So if you have any reports, go ahead and comment on our Facebook Live. North of Clifty, 
potentially another tornado that's crossing right now, Highway 23. Got a viewer that uh, lives in the Clifty area. Maurice, tell me exactly what you experienced real quick. You could hear the train sound, you know, like like a locomotive. Mm -hmm. We had two-inch hail. It blew down a bunch of our trees. Oh, it was it's a mess. It screwed us up really good. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was definitely a tornado here. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. Send it back over to Zach and Dan. What's going on, guys? Yeah, we got a new confirmed tornado. So another tornado that has touched down. This is reported in eastern Boone County. You can see the debris signature. We've got detection. We've got Cody Hudson, one of our storm spotters. Uh, he's on uh, right now on speakerphone. So uh, Cody, go ahead and uh, tell me, uh, first of all, if you're seeing any type of power flashes, because we can see the tornado and it's now confirmed in eastern Boone County. This is on the eastern fringes of our weather coverage area. But Cody, go ahead and uh, tell us what you've got. And let's bring up his stream okay. if we can on weather weather two. Yeah, I, I don't I have not the best uh, uh, visibility right now where I'm at, but I think I did see a little bit of a power flash. Uh, I'm currently sitting here in Western Grove, kind of looking back towards the Albee area. A new confirmed tornado. Take your tornado precautions, eastern, southeastern Boone County. Still showing debris. If you're if you're watching, you need to be in your safe place right now. Whoa. That is a confirmed tornado. Summit, I know, is outside the forecast area, but that is a confirmed tornado. Debris is being lofted in the air. Welcome back to One Supercell to Remember. Now, I wanted to bring in Zach, Josh, and Peyton into the weather lab to take us through their firsthand accounts on what they experienced. You already saw a glimpse of that. We knew what this storm was capable of. We saw the damage firsthand just a little bit, but, you know, obviously it was a devastating storm. Zach, tell me about your experience. Yeah, well, Dan, I was tracking those storms all day, and then they came in, and then that day turned into all nights. And I mean, I've covered tornadoes before, but really nothing like this. We, we, we saw it weaken and then it strengthened up again. It just kept producing. And then when the sun came up that morning, that damage, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, it was incredible for sure. And you were there as the tornadoes were happening, Josh and Peyton. Take us through your firsthand accounts. Yeah, I was along Highway 59 on the south side of Decatur where that anti-cyclonic tornado tore through that area. And the damage, it was just immense. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. I didn't even know it was a storage facility. It was just unrecognizable. I thought it was a community that was just wiped out. Didn't know if people were trapped under there. So it was definitely was a heartbreaking scene to see that damage there in Decatur, but also to see the community come together immediately after the tornado went through. Hey, can I have everybody's attention? Yes, sir. Uh, the storm is still bad out there, it's still blowing and a lot of rain coming down. You guys are welcome to stay here until it, it blows over. We're going to have somebody stay here, but we're going to have to go on out. We have damage being reported in Decatur, so we're going to go and see what we can't do. Definitely a heartbreaking scene, but also an inspiring one to see the community come together there. And at the same time, this storm wasn't over. Yes. And Peyton, you were underneath the storm as it was producing another tornado in Rogers, which mm -hmm. your reports were so vital and key. Take us through what you were experiencing. Yeah, I was on my way to help out with relief efforts once I heard Josh say, this is a re search and rescue mission. I was headed out there and I realized this storm was not through yet. It, it started to drop southeast and uh, eventually went through Rogers, but I was right there at exit 86 and experiencing the damage firsthand in those insanely strong winds. And it's, it's like a hurricane. I've been through several growing up in Houston, so I experienced a lot of strong winds, but the damage was just devastating. Nothing like I had ever seen. It was, and as the sun was rising, we were getting a better idea of the damage. So we're going to take you through the rest of one supercell to remember. Got a new video here. This really gives us an idea of the damage, even though it's it's in the middle of the night here. Uh, so we're going to bring this up. This is Frankie Shepard, one of our spotters. Look at this devastation. Oh my goodness. That gives you a real scope of the damage. Uh, not just tree damage, structure damage, buildings destroyed. I don't exactly know the location of that, 
but we can see that devastation. All right, so we've got uh, Josh Rugger, who is out there tracking storms, along with Casey, uh, one of our reporters. And so, guys, uh, tell us the scene out there, and uh, first of all, tell us where you're at right now. Yeah, Dan, we're along Highway 59 here in Decatur. I mean, you look out and you see there used to be a storage unit, and I mean, right behind us, there's just nothing but piles and piles of just twisted metal, trees, all sorts of other ways. I'm, this is a light pole right here. I'm here with Josh Rugger, who was out chasing this storm and saw this storm. Josh, I mean, just describe for the people sitting at home, what'd you see? Yeah, this was a, this was definitely a devastating storm. It, it, you could tell it was a strong tornado on radar. You could tell that it was going to cause damage once it ramped up as it crossed the Oklahoma Arkansas border. And, you know, I was driving along Highway 59 trying to get a visual of the storm. And once that lightning flash happened, once that power flash happened, it was like a strobe effect, right? It was just one power flash after another. We talked to a gentleman who was right by one of those power flashes as well. And that's when I knew that it was causing uh, pretty widespread damage in Decatur. And of course, uh, we've been, I've been out here all morning long assessing this damage, talking to the folks here. And so far, I'm uh, just really happy to report that all the people that we've talked to, that they're okay, that they're safe. That's the most important thing when it comes to something like this, but uh, just destructive damage here in Decatur for sure. Here's a dog coming up here. Um, I don't know whose dog this may be right here, drinking out of this water, which this is really chilling seeing sort of this stream right here from where the heavy rainfall kind of came down. And now it almost looks like a peaceful stream. It's just very sobering just how destructive this was just a few hours ago. Let's go to Josh Harvison, our news director. He's located in the Rogers area. And uh, Josh, you got a report for us right now. Yeah, Dan, thanks uh, for everything you guys have done all night. Uh, and of course, this is going to be several days worth of coverage. Now, hopefully you guys can see what I'm seeing, but this is furniture for less building. And the entire top side of the building just looks like it's been pushed to this direction. You see a bunch of mantle uh, all over the place. You see, I saw a capture right here, which is obviously something small. But the further you go down Walnut Street, you see an image, you guys showed an image of a RV that was overturned. That is here between here and the Planet Fitness that is just down the road. There's an Andy's frozen custard just down the road. I have the AT&T store here. And of course, as the sun starts to rise, we're gonna be able to see a lot more. I also smell gas. And as a matter of fact, I'm probably too close to it, but that looks like that's a gas line. And I can hear it, you can hear the fizz of the gas as it's coming out. Some of these images we're seeing as the sun comes up is just tragic, really. Buildings, homes, and businesses that have been in this community for years, decades even, destroyed. If you navigate town by using landmarks, things will look different. The, the landscape out there looks very different. At 7 a.m., we, we will get that update from first responders. We're not sure exactly what we're going to hear. And at this point, from our contact with emergency personnel, a lot of them are still learning exactly what has happened overnight, because as the sun comes up, they're learning more and more. At this time, we have several injuries, and tragically, we have one confirmed fatality on the east side of the county. Um, we also have multiple law enforcement, fire, and EMS agencies responding across the county. Uh, on search and rescue and other life safety missions. The Got some new video here. This is brand new coming in from Charles Peak. And there you see the roof that's damaged, several areas that are ripped off, buildings that are destroyed. Um, but this gives you an idea as that, that light is out so you can kind of see a little bit more of that, uh, of that damage. You, you see this in Oklahoma. You see this devastation and tornado outbreaks. And you just think this would never happen in, in, in back in your town. Um, and we, we see that video, Dan. That's, yeah. that's someone's business. I know. So they're they're gonna their livelihood. They're, they're not gonna have a place to go to work on Monday. We got a alarm go off on our phone about two o'clock in the morning. We seen that there was a possibility of tornado activity. It was scary. It was loud and scary. It had the heavy rain, hail, and then the wind, and then you hear a freight train right after the power went. 
It sounded like a train was going through here. Just a loud noise. I can't really pinpoint it. The wind was blowing extremely hard. And then it calmed the way down. And then all of a sudden, it came up. It was just a little chaotic seeing all the power lines uh, come down and all the lights flashing blue. It was just a lot for me, and I've never experienced something like that living here for the past 23 years. Uh, you know, I, I figured we were going to be gone, but it left us sitting and standing right there in the hallway. Just total destruction. Buildings that used to be there are totally gone. Nothing left of them, just like what you see behind me. They're totally gone. As you pull up here, you know, in the dark, glass everywhere, walls down, they didn't know what was going on or what happened. All they knew is they got to the truck and their home was gone. You know, 16, 17 years of memories just gone. We come out and seen all the damage outside. It's just, it was dumbfounding. I don't think Roger's been hit by one this hard in a long time. This one was just different. You know, I could just, it was stronger, <laughs> obviously. So sad seeing the neighborhood just demolished the way it is. for bed and, uh, and all of a sudden my wife uh, she called me hollering and so I went to see what she was hollering about and by the time I got down halfway by the hallway the lights went off so I got asked her and I said what's going on she said I hear a tornado coming I said I know it's raining and blowing wind pretty hard so and all of a sudden I got right up by her and the glass broke stuff started blowing through the house and so I took it and laid over top of her to protect her from the debris. And all of a sudden, it, everything just went, the windows blowed out, the doors blowed out, and uh, everything was, went flying everywhere. And we was praying, asking God to protect us. And we kept praying as long as the storm was coming through and we made it through it. And I'm gonna show you the power of prayer too. You know it, but well, let's go ahead and take a look over here at the living room. This is where you survived and that chair that's back in the corner of the living room is where those people survived. This is the northern extent of the tornado. And there it is, it's done. It just lifts at that point, trees are fine.
you can tell trees are pulled down this way. They're rotating. You got more tree damage here. It's sporadic. RFD damage, but no, definitely trees. You can see them all pulled in a direction. And so this mark this right here on the north side of Bentonville. So what we're trying to do is we've got new video evidence of rotating rain curtains, winds shifting directions from Bentonville. There's a lot of talk about how there was a tornado that came through Bentonville. The Weather Service, with the limited time that they have, they came out, they saw trees laying down in a similar direction, which is indicative of straight line winds. But with new video evidence of rotating rain curtains on the northwest side of the Bentonville Square, that lines up with a lot of tree damage. We're checking it out. What we're looking for is a convergent wind pattern where trees are pulled into a center line, which would be the tornado vortex. And if we can find damage that's being pulled back towards the tornado, we know that we have a tornado and we can confirm that damage and the weather service can get another confirmation on a tornado in Bentonville. These trees, first of all, to repair and replace, you're not going to be able to replace, but they're super expensive, just a small tree. Think of the amount of money that was lost from this storm alone. Even if it didn't hit a home, you've lost something that you've had in your backyard for literally almost 100 years, maybe even more, and these trees are no more as they have been knocked down. And think of all the debris and cleanup that this is going to take. You see all the trees on the side of the roads. This is going to take months, if not close to a year, to get everything back in order. We're approaching uh, 700,000 cubic yards today that we've uh, that our hauler has picked up. That's that's uh, <laughs> that's in addition to what the residents have brought us to the other three sites we had to drop off. Um, so well over a million cubic yards of vegetative debris as a result of this storm. That doesn't even you know begin to talk about the construction debris. Mm -hmm. To see the amount of devastation from trees and electric poles and everything, and to know that for the most part people were safe um, in the middle of that, pretty amazing to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, I, I was looking at some of the pictures, but you know, the root balls on these trees. Yeah. I mean, you know, we went and you just stand next to them and they're huge and they just lifted out of the ground. Like it was just, honestly, it was really shocking whenever you really got out and started to see the destruction. Definitely a storm that changed the landscape of the city. It's, yeah. uh, you know, now we're driving in, there's no city hall anymore and people come up and we're working remotely out of the, out of the fire department at the moment, but uh, thanks to the, Thanks to the city of Springdale, they donated us a, a mobile unit. I, I saw pictures of that mm -hmm. up there. It was delivered last week. The width of this tornado that came across us is the width of Decatur. And had it aligned itself in a particular way, Decatur could have been gone and many of us could have been dead. You don't rely on them sirens. They're outdoor warning devices. I mean, they'll right. wake you up if you live close to it, but make sure you have a weather radio or you know, our, our new stations have uh, great weather apps, uh, BC alerts out there. 
you know, make sure you have a way to, 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 to and then also, again, you know, if you haven't filed a, a, with FEMA, you know, please do that right away. Let them know. FEMA is here on the ground. They're, they want to help. It's easy to process. It's, uh, it's not an intimidating process. And they have a new tool in their belt that they haven't had for other storms in the past mm -hmm. that just started in March. And that is so, so there's a $42,000 cap on individual assistance, but there's an additional $42,000 cap for underinsured gaps. Mm, okay. And so knowing that so many people in Northwest Arkansas have, have really been the beneficiary of, of appreciating property values, they haven't kept up with their insurance. Mm -hmm. And so I would venture to guess that 80 to 85% of people in Benton County are probably underinsured on their home. Yeah. And so th this will apply for that gap. But going forward, folks need to understand that, that while we hope this never happens again, when you get your fence repaired or the, the worst scenario that you're in, you need to get with your insurance company. You need to make sure that you're covered to the level that you want to be covered in, in the event of a future storm. As, as our hauler has put it, and, and they've been doing this for a long time, and so is the monitoring firm, that from a debris standpoint, it's the worst they've ever seen. Wow. Hurricane, tornado, whatever, yeah. the worst they've ever seen. Wow. So, I, you know, I'm glad we got, got a, a good quick start on it, but now, you know, the process is going to go a little slower as pass through and pass, you know, pass two and pass three comes through. We're in the second swipe going through the city of trying to get debris up. Um, so we want people to call us if they think that um, they've set more debris out and we need to get a truck down there. What our residents need to understand, we're not going anywhere. The, we're going to haul debris until it's all gone. Um, and so people need to just be patient, continue to, to put their debris out at the curb, keep it separated, vegetative debris from construction debris, from trash, keep it away from power poles, from fire hydrants, from uh, you know, any other utilities um, that, that sit in your front yard. This is not a next month or um, the by the end of the year when the fat guy in the red suit comes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is going to be a much longer process of recovery. Yeah. And it's, it's a psychological process of recovery because even as you get your home put back together and your neighbors do, you still have to leave your neighborhood and you're going to see 24th and Walnut, which isn't going to be back to normal for a long time. There's people I've never seen before that showed up with chainsaws, start cutting trees, you know, for the roads that were blocked. It's my my third anniversary, and I didn't expect to start the day out this way, but you know, you chip in when when people need help. We've been going to a lot of houses with chainsaws and just cutting up as much as we can. We're sending out volunteers across the county to help people free of charge remove their trees and the debris that has accumulated in the yards. Some people have lost everything, and so to just be a tiny part of their day, load up their car, give them a smile, show them where they can take a hot shower. We're basically just putting together kits for people who are in need. We want to tell them thank you. They, they do an awful lot. Growing up in Decatur, it's a good community. Everybody has came together as a community and helped everybody out here. People I don't even know people just from the community, from the school. And individuals without electricity, individuals with trees on their homes, in their yard, those individuals left the mess that they had to come and help folks that were in need. Our building behind me actually has some damage, but we plan today so that we can make sure we do serve this week because we know there's extra needs. Thank you so much for everything and you're just supporting so much like families and just so many people that clearly need help. Hi everyone, happy Friday. It is Friday and today is a special day. That's because it's called Founders Day. We're handing out some flyers here so we can get some relief for tornado days. Let's be honest, they've been hit hard. Every year, one day in June, everybody in all of the next star stations gets together and look at all the things that we're gathering. We're, we're actually building the kits that will be given out here, Dan. Here's the list, washcloths, large towels. Let's get some people to donate items. Let's make this an amazing Next Star Founders Day of Caring on this June 14th, 2024. Take care, guys. Have a good one.